Hey guys, it's Panda. Um, I'm going to do my best to do a single video about this because I've been recording little short snippets um, over the last several days about this incident, but I wasn't really happy with my basically emotional state at the time and didn't explain it very well. Um, and things keep happening, so I think I'm just going to put it all in one video at this point um, so that everybody knows what's going on. And today was kind of a tipping point, and I'm just, I've had it at this point with um, the management here. It's basically just the management, although the uh, maintenance guy who everybody thought was cool with uh, what we're doing clearly isn't because he's the one who told her both times that he saw me having uh, anything plugged in out on my porch where there's two outlets under my porch camera for a reason because sometimes people need to plug shit in and um, the only, so the only um, I've been feeding stray cats on my porch for years I've been living here for 15 years we, me and, uh, mostly me, but then this neighbor lady that moved in over the last year have decreased the stray cat population in this complex by 75% at least because there have been so many cats and so many babies born here that it was out of control and they were complaining constantly about it. So my, so I've been trying to feed them, socialize them, get the kittens in and get them you know, um, socialized and uh, adopted out or fixed or whatever. Um, I, I've been meaning to do this, the trap neuter, spay neuter thing. Um, it's very hard to do when you don't have transportation and also the vet um, you have to schedule for. So if you do trap one, you basically have to keep it in your, in your bedroom or apartment until you can bring them in, which the neighbors are not willing to do. Nobody else here is willing to do that even the ones that don't have pets. So I've been the only one who's been bringing them in and I'm still trying to adopt out two uh, adult cats that I have here that if I do get caught with them, I'll probably get in trouble because I'm not supposed to have more than one or two cats. And so if she does come around here and notices that, all I can do is tell her that they're foster cats I'm trying to get rid of because they were strays. And I would assume she'd rather not have them outside breeding again um but who knows because she's extremely bipolar and and extremely narcissistic and apathetic to the extreme and she doesn't give a shit about any life but her own and any anybody most people here will tell you that but anyway um so up until the incident where um somebody on the other side of the complex put an exposed heating element uh, like a space heater with an exposed heating coil on it outside on a card in a cardboard box apparently in a bush in winter last winter and it caught fire and it burned and did some damage to the apartment so because this other lady that didn't know what she was doing uh used something not in a way it was intended for in a extremely volatile flammable environment um, I don't see how that's my problem <laughs> because if you know, if you notice, um, if you look down here outside of my window where I have a tarp covered plastic tote, there it, okay, the only scrap of wood or, or anything burnable is literally that porch railing, okay? Um, besides the plywood sheet that I use to block the wind from the doorway is basically it. There's nothing, there's no grass, there's no bushes, there's no cardboard, there's nothing out there that's going to catch fire, even if I had been using anything flammable or anything that would cause a fire. Um, so I spent about 80 bucks getting an outdoor cat shelter crate and also two um, that one had already came with a waterproof, uh, uh, they're right here actually, under this mat. There's This one came with the cat shelter. It is a waterproof outdoor cat shelter heating pad. The entire cord is covered in this thick plastic coil that does not have any openings in it. The entire plug is sealed with rubber. 
and this entire thing is compliant to every fire safety code. And then I bought this extra heating pad to put in the plastic crate that I have out there. And I didn't know till I got it that it had a re a control on the on the cord because I would have not gotten one like this if I'd known that. And honestly, if it wasn't for this, I might not have gotten caught with it because this thing glows when it's on and you can see it at night. Even though I had it wrapped in plastic bags and taped up off of the ground so that it wouldn't get wet because I knew that was one of their concerns or whatever with anything that's outside. They don't want anything on the porch. They don't want us to have anything. Even though, even though every, there's probably eight out of ten people in this complex where there's dozens and dozens and dozens of people with porches and patios all have things on their patios and porches like one lady that was behind me, her entire patio area is covered in wind chimes and plants and um, flower pots and everything. Like, if we're not supposed to have anything out, like, my neighbor has a chair on her porch. Like, my other neighbor has, you know, a, a box and a crate and a chair on their porch, and yet they don't get in trouble for anything. So, um, currently, um, these are in here, not being used when we have a lifetime low record low temperatures right now it's going to be 20 below out tonight and these heaters are going to be sitting in here going to waste where it could be saving cats lives out there because they aren't going to survive out in exposed weather like this um, but anyway this was also purchased as a camping slash um, hunting waterproof weatherproof heating pad which also is completely sealed all the way around. Like, you can't tell me that this is a fire hazard when it was plugged in on a cement porch with not a scrap of grass or bushes or wood in sight. Um, I put straw out just now because it was covered in ice and I was slipping on the porch. So I just have some straw on the ground um, currently to try and stop from slipping and breaking my neck on the ice. But, um, I don't want to go out and start yelling about it again, so let me see if I can show you here. What I did was, after today's incident, continued incident, um, I just have this piece of plywood blocking the front of the totes that I have out here on the end of my porch, on the patio, not on the porch. Um, and I just have this piece of plywood sort of leaning up against the wall so that the wind doesn't get into the doorways. And the entire thing is covered in a white tarp, so it doesn't look like anything at this point. And there's no heating elements out there. There's nothing plugged in. So right now, there is literally nothing she could complain about other than it being ugly with that wood there, which is not something she can evict me for, you would think. Um, so... I don't know if the cats are ever going to use those now because they've been messed with so many fucking times. But, um, so on Friday, I believe, no, sorry, not Friday, Wednesday, when I got home from the store Wednesday afternoon, um, I had been gone for about an hour, hour and a half, and the only people who were uh, around my apartment, which is in the very back of the complex, the back corner of the complex where there's nothing but woods surrounding it on three sides. Um, they, they put a notice in my door for um, an appointment I had for my re-evaluation because it's subsidized. And they were the only ones that would have put, the, the maintenance guy would have been the only one that put it in my door. And when I came home from the store, my outdoor cat shelter with the heating pad in it and then the heating pad from the other the tote that's out there were taken and missing and were gone. There was no note about it. There was no phone call about it. Um, I went the next morning to my appointment and I was gonna confront her about it after my appointment. But when I got done with all my paperwork and went and my appointment, which she never said a word about it, um, uh, somebody else came in to talk to her and was standing right there waiting. So I didn't wanna confront her about it then. So I came home and left a message for her after they closed, which they close in the middle of the day. Um, they're only open for like four hours every weekday. So I left her a message about it and told her 
I assume it was the maintenance that took them because they were the only ones here in the short time I wasn't home. And they left the notice for my appointment in the door, so I assume it was them. And if you could please have it returned and put on my porch uh, before you leave for the day. Otherwise, I'll have to call the police and file a stolen property report for whoever did steal it. Um, so she left the, so she had them drop it off even though I was waiting to listen for them on the porch by the way um, and, and I was watching my porch camera I did not see them they didn't knock on the door I opened the door to um, check on the cat food and stuff and there was this notice in my door on, on Wednesday and they always put a time that is hours before they left it by the way um, so they left this notice in my door the first time on Thursday when they left my uh, cat house um, with the two heating pads in it uh, against the corner of my uh, porch under my camera where I couldn't see it until I opened the door far enough. And then they also left this notice in my door, um, which is mostly bullshit. Um, <laughs> Where she says she spoke to me on numerous occasions is kind of bullshit because, I mean, me, myself and the neighbor lady did speak to her separately on one or two occasions, each each of us, about why we're what we're doing and why we're doing it and how it's actually taking care of the stray cat problem. And all she did at the time was shrug it off and say we just can't have anything on the porch or whatever. Um, so she knew she knew we were doing this. We're feeding them socializing them and trying to keep them from dying of you know exposure so that we can get them fixed and rehomed and take care of the problem and not have a dozens of stray cats around here again because that's the thing that she complained about all the time so she thinks that they're only around here because we feed them and that's bullshit because there's only three of us in this entire complex that feed them dry food and uh, they actually hunt probably more than they eat the dry food because the squirrels eat the dry food mostly. <laughs> but uh, they they were here when I moved here. They were here for years before I started feeding them. And they did not reduce in number before I started feeding them. And they were still around. They were still getting hit by cars. They were still, you know, trying to find shelter around here um, for years before I started putting anything out for them to lay in or whatever um so up until that incident with the other lady happened last year she never said anything about the one little shelter I had or the food I put out or anything so when she did we explained to her why we were doing it what we were doing you know it's not that big a deal we'll we'll get rid of them in a year and then we'll stop feeding them and whatever and it'll be done with and she shrugged it off, and she even made jokes to other people about if they didn't want their cats, they could just drop them off on our porch. As if that's something to joke about. Like, if people here who didn't, you know, were moving out, didn't want their pet anymore, they could just drop them off with us, apparently. That's what she told people. Um, so, she keeps telling me that her bosses are the ones that don't, allow us to feed the cats but I don't think the bosses have even been informed properly about any of this um so secondly um I don't know what she means by having anything plugged in and how this is very dangerous um because that they're having anything plugged in is not very dangerous um Okay, so it says, if you vi if they are out again, you will get a second write-up, and a third will result in eviction. So, the second write-up that she left today, by the way, is about the same thing after I already resolved it. So, after this one, I no longer had them plugged in. I only had them plugged in for one night between like 8 p.m. and 5 or 6 a.m. when they couldn't have possibly seen them. And then, you know, that was it. So this does not make sense to me because the second one that they left today, after they closed for the day, not, not when it says they left it. It says under here 11 a.m., but they left it after 1 because I was up between 8 and 
1230 or 1 o'clock waiting for them to show up for an inspection that they keep saying they're doing this week. Um, and so we have to wait up every day for them, to, whether or not they're going to show up to our apartment to look through everything. That's always fun, especially when they do it every two or three months. But this is the second one she left in my door for the same incident, by the way. I don't know how legal that is to leave me a second written notice for the same exact incident. Like, how is that legal? I've, I complied. I have no, nothing on my porch, including cat food. All I have is that one piece of plywood leaning up against the wall. Okay. There's nothing plugged in. There's no heating elements. There's nothing out there. So I don't know what she means by this. Because I didn't get a phone call. I didn't get a knock on my door. Nothing. Okay. Um, uh, you were warned about having the cat boxes outside with the heat on again. You must remove the cat boxes. Why? Why? I don't have cat boxes. I have a plastic tote. There's no cat. This That's a plastic tote. So I'm going to have to leave a note out there warning them that I have complied with not having heating elements and not having a cat shelter or whatever. Cat box. There's no cat box. It's not a cat box. It's a storage crate that everybody has one on their porch or on their patio of. So if she's going to be like... um. This, I'm going to have to put a note on there saying this is not uh, against the rules. There is no heating element and it is not on the porch. So you better not touch my stuff. So, because before when they took the cat box, they took that cat box with the heating pads in it. So that one's not out there anymore because that says cat heated cat shelter on the side, which I probably should have been smart enough to cover it up before but uh, there was never an issue like it's made to be outside I don't know how it's an issue so anyway I brought that one in and I brought the heating pads in and since that is all they took the first time you would think there's nothing for them to take now right there's just the plastic tote they left out there and a piece of wood that I've had out there for probably five years that I've used for various reasons like there's nothing out there that's breaking any rules at this point. So her continuing to threaten me about the same thing is a joke. And is pro it should be illegal. But then she also says, this is hilarious. This is rich. We will take them again and not return them. I will call the police department and fire department. As it is a safety issue and goes against our policy. I, I, should, I would love to be able to tell her. Please do call the fire department. Please do have a fire department special fire safety specialist out here because I guarantee you they will explain to you exactly why you can purchase for the last however many decades now a waterproof, weatherproof, winterproof heating pad or heating blanket that are literally designed to be used out in the weather for hunters for farmers, for uh, the military, for soldiers that have been using them since World War II, everything. Like, what? why do you think these exist? Why do you think these things actually were manufactured and comply with the fire safety code as much as anything else does that is used in the way it is meant to be used in, which is what I was doing? Actually, I was doing it much safer because... I had them in sealed plastic totes where they couldn't possibly get wet. And I had the board leaning up against the wall along the entire length of the cord and the plug outlet so that that couldn't get wet. So there was absolutely no way for it to get wet and have any kind of problem. But I also would like to know why those outlets are out there if we can't have anything plugged into them. Or why the neighbor ladies have all been allowed to have Christmas lights plugged in for more than a month or two months, more than two months, outside on their porches, outside on their bushes and trees, and not have a single thing wrong with that. Because I can guarantee you this cord and this plug that are 100% sealed and against weather and, and water 
are a hell of a lot safer than a string of Christmas lights that has, has a regular plug on the end. So if she wants to start something like that, I would love for her to call the fire department down here. And I also am planning on calling the main office or the or, or her boss or whatever so that I can explain to them what's going on because she is clearly too ignorant to know what exists in the world and what actual fire safety code means. Because fire safety code, federal regulated fire safety code is not equal to whatever her other universe fucking rules are. Like, I'm getting sick and tired of being threatened and having notes left in my door when I'm sitting here waiting for them to knock already and they're too pussy to knock on the door and give it to me face to face or tell me that I need to bring them in so that I don't get another fucking notice. Like they could have just told me to bring them in the first time instead of stealing them. They could have told me the second time, you know, when there wasn't even anything to point at because there was nothing plugged in. Not when they left the notice, not before they left the notice, not not yesterday, not the day before. There was nothing plugged in. So I'm going to, I already left her a message right after I got that notice in my door for the second time. I left her a very scathing message, basically in the same tone I'm using now. And I said, yes, um, can you please explain to me what it is you are leaving this for? Because there was nothing out there. <laughs> there was not a cat house. There was not a, a heating pad. There was not a cord plugged in. There was nothing. So I don't know how you can legally leave me a second eviction warning notice for this when it's for the same incident and there is nothing out there. So she better she better straighten her act up or I'm going to have to try and find a lawyer or something. And this is the second time that I've had to go this far, by the way, because the, I've she's been they've been trying to evict me multiple times. The first time it was because I had two cats instead of one even though I moved here when they had a two pet policy and I was allowed to have two pets. And uh, the second time is when I was in a medical coma for two months and came home to find eviction notices in my mailbox and on my door because they were trying to get rid of me after I died, trying to tell me that I did something illegal to off myself, which was not the case. But, you know, they've been trying everything they can think of to try and get rid of me. And it's not like this is my choice. It's not like I am living here because I really, really, really want to. I am stuck here. Like, this is my prison cell. I am not choosing to live here in this bullshit. I am not choosing to live in this weather. I am not choosing to live in a place full of hypocritical, lying, manipulative bigots that don't give a shit about anybody and, and, and gossip about everything. I did not choose to live here. I had to live here because there was no other choice. And I've been stuck here for 15 goddamn years, regretting every fucking day of it. And it is not my choice to have to kill myself every day to try and pay for my prison cell that, you know, I didn't do anything wrong to be locked in. And people who do things wrong to be locked up don't have to pay for prison cells. But by all means... Keep making this a living hell for me every day that you possibly can. Like, I can possibly move out if I wanted to. Like, you're, like she's acting as if I can actually, like, she's trying to drive me out. As if I have any means of moving out. Like, there is no means. I'm going to have to tell her that. Like, look, I don't know how long you're going to be working here at this point. But I'm stuck here until I die. And it is not my choice. I am stuck here. So if you want this to be a living hell for both of us until the day I die, then we can keep doing this or you can just let me mind my own business and let me do my own thing and help people and animals the best I can and take care of your problem for you and, and, and we can just live our own lives separately and you don't have to keep doing this shit because I don't have a means of moving out. This is not my choice. I am stuck here. So trying to force me to move out because your nonstop harassment is not going to work. I am stuck here. And if, if you think I'm going to just sit here and take all this harassment every day for, for helping and doing things that you don't want to do and help with and spending shit tons of money doing it, then, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're basically wasting your time. Because even if you give me an eviction notice and you try to evict me, like actually evict me, I have nowhere to go. 
So what's going to happen is I'm probably going to end up offing myself because I can't be homeless with no vehicle and nowhere to go. And then you'll end up with a lawsuit on your hands because everybody knows what's going on right now and what's going to drive me to do that if it happens. Because this is not something that I can tolerate by myself when I have no, I'm backed into a corner and I have no other recourse. I have no way to move out. I have nowhere to go. I have no vehicle to live in. I have no money saved up to do anything with. There's no way I can live in a hotel, no family to stay with. So really, you're just trying to force me to off myself, basically. And if you think I'm going to be able to off myself and you're going to be able to get away scot-free, good luck with that. Because my family is extremely, there's some people in my family who are just, just aching to sue somebody. Just, just itching to sue somebody, you know, <laughs> you know, any chance they possibly can. So let's just see how far this fucking goes, I guess, because when ever anybody says, you know, karma is a bitch and karma is a thing and karma is going to do this and that and justice is, karma is justice and all this bullshit. This is why I want to slap them because if karma existed, I would be allowed to continue helping these animals and, and taking care of them and getting rid of the problem. And they would be thanking me for it instead of literally threatening me with eviction and constantly harassing me and stealing my shit and driving me into a stressful problem. So I think karma is only for people who are extremely privileged and have luck and good luck and things that happen to them that are positive all the time. And they think that, you know, bad people have bad things happen to them. But apparently they live in a different world than I do. Because that is not what I see anymore. <laughs> at all. That is not what I see at all. In my family, in my neighborhood, in the people I have to deal with on a daily basis. I don't see that. I don't see karma anywhere. I don't see justice anywhere. And I and all I see is that I can't trust anybody anymore. I can't trust anybody. I can't I can't, you know, tell anybody anything. I can't, you know, expect people to not do everything in their power to stop me from helping or stop me from from just surviving or stop me from doing good things. That's what they're there for. That's what, you know, I that's what happens when you do good things in the world. You get punished. You get threatened, and the people who threaten and punish you get rewarded. So, anyway, there's my uh, shoebox rant vlog for today. I just wanted to update everybody on that situation. So, if uh, if we end up with, you know, maybe two or three stray cats left, that's going to be because they all died in this weather. And I uh, could not appreciate it more that they chose this time during record low temperatures in my entire life to just pull this shit with me because why not right why not pull this shit why not pull this shit right now i mean there there i'm here to fight my ass off when i can barely survive already with my dozens of severely debilitating painful symptoms that i have to fight with every hour of every day just to get through the day and i have to deal with this on top of it and I have to fight seizures every time I try to put food and water out for these cats. And on top of all that, I get to deal with this bitch. Like, by myself, by the way. I don't have anybody helping me. I don't even have anybody encouraging me, really. Like, I have one friend who's kind of taking care of other cats herself that's kind of, you know, sharing back and forth with me. But, like, I don't have any actual emotional support or physical support. You know, anything. Like, I don't, I'm not talking about financial, by the way. She also helps me that way. But, like, it's hard not having anybody there to, like, share things with and cry to about this shit instead of just re ranting all the time in my fucking video. Like, it's very hard not being able to talk to anybody, except for, of course, you know, when I try to tell my mom what's going on and she's all like, well, you better take it in. You're not gonna, you can't get evicted, you know. Well, just, just, Stop trying to do so much and just leave it alone and blah, blah, blah. Like, she doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't give a fuck about the cats either. She thinks it's not worth the trouble. Just like everybody else in my family. And 
most of my dad's family would just not even blink if they ran over a cat in the street, so they don't care. <laughs> but, like, anyway, I just wanted to update you guys, and I hope everybody else is staying warm and try to send some good vibes over here, because we could really fucking use them right now. Um... Anyway, I'll talk to you guys on the next one if I even upload this. So, I'll, yeah, I'll update you later, I guess. Peace out.